Hey everyone, in this lecture we'll be talking about fast input and output through Java. So the first thing we'll be discussing is why we need this. Uh, usually input output operations uh, take a very long time and they could take a significant portion of your runtime. Uh, in that case you would like to reduce the time that these operations take or you can try and avoid them. Uh, let's see what happens if we try and avoid them. So we are going to try and reduce the number of output operations we are doing. Very similar uh, case in a programming contest is that the number of test cases are given to you and for every test case we need to print something. You can answer. So here you can see that for every test case, if, if uh, test case is equal to 10 raised to the power 5, 10 raised to the power 5 times uh, we'll be using the output stream and this is very very slow. What we can do to avoid this is print only once. Now how do we do this? We could, uh, we could uh, you know, store this value in a string called sums right I think I have stood up a little uh, shouldn't be final yeah so now every time for every test case we are going to be taking the answer and appending it to a string and finally we can you know output that. Let's just get rid of this. So, as you can see for every test case we do some computations and then we uh, evaluate S. S is the answer. So, here the number of output operations are really low but the problem is uh, Java has strings as immutable. So, every time we say s plus equal to it's actually creating a new string object and adding the string answer to it uh, not very efficient there are two ways around this one is string buffer but if you actually go into the details of this class you'll see that it's uh, it's, it's uh, concurrently uh, it's safe uh, that's really good, but issue is we are not really bothered about concurrency right now. What we would like is the fastest string appender possible, and for that we have string builder. Right, once we have that, we can just say string builder append this. Yeah, we have appended the answer. Remember, string builder does not append a new line character unless it's been asked to and printing finally is as simple as two string you don't even need this actually so that's the fast output part now let's discuss about fast input so let's jump to it so you can see the program i have here is pretty simple it's uh, initializing a fast i object with uh, input stream and then asking to read an int so what's actually happening when we are initializing this fast i object is it's taking the input stream we are passing as a parameter and setting it as the stream for this class so an input stream essentially is is like a river of characters and uh, our our, our pointer we have a particular pointer which points to this river of characters so at different intervals we'll be meeting different characters and that, that's a very poetic way to say it uh, basically what's happening is we are going to be reading ints strings longs bytes whatever data type you want and uh, we'll be having a few helper functions uh, to 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 help read in these these data types so let's attack the most common 
function used need int. What's happening here? It's taking in a single character. Now, notice I will have to typecast this to char if I if I want to read a char. So it's easier to keep it as int because Java, you know, internally uses uh, int for multiplications, divisions, everything, subtractions, everything. So let's keep this int. But essentially, what's happening is the read function, which is a little complicated, and uh, you know, we won't be discussing it in this lecture. But you could run a debugger through this and figure out what's exactly happening. So a read function defines the number of bytes to be read, stuff like that. But it's going to return you a single character. Now, if this character is a space character, we don't care. We are going to go through. We are going to go ahead and uh, read the next character. So. Is space character is a little interesting. You can define what a space character is. Notice that minus one actually means that there was no input. Tab characters, funny slash r. I, I don't really know what they call it. Um, this is a new line, and this is a simple space. Thank God I know this one. Um, so any space character that you define, if you want something like a comma separated thing, you know. Just do this, and done. Uh, you're you're going to read through comma separated uh, values also pretty simply. So you can define what a space character is. You can even rename this function to ignored character. Maybe that's a better name. But uh, I think I'll keep the is space character because for now it's only space characters that are being ignored. Right. So the next thing we want to see once we have ignored all the spaces is the sign. So let's take an example. Initially, our pointer is here, and there were a few spaces. There was a minus so and so, and another space. That's it. What's essentially happened is that. We have come here. Yeah. The next character we encountered is a minus. If it had been a number or anything other than a minus, this if loop wouldn't have run through. As it is, we have come to this minus and we are going to be setting this sign variable to minus one. Reason for this being simple because this is a negative integer. We will be sending the final result multiplied by the sign. Right. Once we have read in the minus sign, we want to go to the next character, which should be a uh, uh, digit. So we initialize the result to zero, and we go into this do while loop. Before we actually check out what's happening here, let's have a look at this. The terminating condition of the while loop. If it is not a space character, then keep doing this. Which means if it is a space character, come out. So when is this while loop going to terminate? Yeah, at this point. This point. Right. So till then, what's actually going to happen is that we are going to be reading in these characters and we are going to be checking that none of them are greater than the character 0 or the character less than the character 0 and greater than the character 9. Now, notice that this is character, this is not 0, this is wrong. This is correct. Remember that we are actually reading in characters, not digits from 0 to 9. Yeah. Next what happens is, on every iteration, we are going to multiply by 10 and we are going to add the current character to the result. You can imagine what actually happens uh, in the in the parsing. Uh, initially, result is zero. Multiplied by ten, remains zero. Then you add the next character, which is one here. So result becomes one. The next time, result is multiplied by ten, so result becomes ten. Plus the next character, which is four. So that becomes fourteen, and so on till you 
actually come to uh, this the result and you can see that returning it with into minus one is actually going to give you the correct thing you wanted to read in the other function read string is much simpler it's uh, basically reading in characters if they are not space ones start appending and stop when you encounter a space so this is going to read a full string for you uh, read long read byte these these are very easy to implement I can actually uh, implement a read byte for you right now which is going to return a byte it's quite easy to implement this because the result is a byte and uh, that's it yeah just if you are if you are sure that the values between um, minus 1 to 7 to 1 to 8 yeah you you're pretty sure i wouldn't trust my function just now I, I would like to test it a little more but I'm sure if you take out the sign variable then uh, if, you're, if you're sure that the byte value is going to be positive uh, yeah read bytes going to work 100% there's you can you can actually uh, do a lot with these functions you can reuse some of the functions especially read uh, to read characters read uh, short anything that you're like so finally I'd like to say that uh, when do you really want a fast IO? Do you want it always? Not necessarily. Issues with fast IOs, the implementations are pretty concrete. Space characters are very important here. So in case you are actually reading in a whole line with 10 integers in them, space separated. Uh, Maybe you don't want to be using read in too many times because it might just be slower. Also, uh, if you're reading a passage or, or some big set of strings, maybe a simple buffered reader dot read line uh, will perform better than than the fast IO we have. But uh, I would I would suggest that you actually try these these uh, implementations and uh, the different uh, performance times they have for different problems uh, in general if there aren't too many splits to be done the the fast IO class performs much better in case there's a lot of split to be done we use uh, a simple buffer reader class which I could just show you yeah, yeah. I think most most comparative programmers will be uh, quite accustomed to this syntax. br dot read line. So that's it for the fast IO class. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about GitHub integration. So I'll see you there.